Hello and welcome to KJ's Kitchen. I am KJ. I'm 14 years a master fitness trainer, a fitness nutrition specialist, and most important to me, I'm a happy mom serving up healthy meals from my kitchen to yours every Wednesday here on Facebook. And I would like to report that I'm going to be putting these on IGTV as well. So any of you on IG, yes, it's live on Facebook, but I'm going to be repeating that over on IGTV. So check me out over there as well. Handle at GetKJFit. So I, I love, love a specialty coffee drink. Can I get a little hand raise for anyone out there who likes their specialty coffee drinks? Now that may be Starbucks or even going to a cafe because a lot of cool cafes out there are making really amazing drinks, especially here in Asheville. So I know tis the season for everything pumpkin spice and it launches everywhere and it comes in so many different varieties. Today I'm going to be doing a makeover of a pumpkin spice latte and don't go away if you're not a coffee drinker because if you make this with an extra strong chai tea, oh it's insanely delicious. So this could be a pumpkin spice latte or a pumpkin spice chai latte. Today I'm going to be using coffee, um, but by all means, all you tea drinkers, go for the chai. It is a black coffee, I mean a black tea, so there is a little bit of caffeine. If you want to avoid that, you would just get an herbal chai. I know Rubio sometimes has chai. Um, let's get started with the coffee itself. Now I French pressed a nice strong coffee. I recommend even double strength because this is going to serve two people. So if you're only one and you want to go through the process for one beverage, you're going to cut everything in half. So I'm, I have it extra strong. Literally, I did two scoops instead of one. I usually do one in my French press. I did two because I'm using one cup to serve two people. So I want that strength uh, doubled up. So we're going with one cup of really strong coffee. And like I said, if you are doing chai tea, you would do one cup of chai. And, and you do like two tea bags in a boiling eight ounce water rather than one tea bag. So you have double strength. Now for the latte version, this is a vegan latte. If you are or your family's into dairy and you wanna go with milk, I do suggest you going with a whole milk and grass fed, non-homogenized. Whoa, that was a lot of information. Grass-fed offers you more trace minerals, and you know those cows aren't pumped with uh, antibiotics and hormones. And then the non-homogenized is one less step of denatured. It's one less step of breaking the food from what it should be. Of course, my family drinks raw. We do have local farmers who we can access. Um, but if you are using you know, pasteurized, go for non-homogenized and whole milk. All right, today we're going vegan. We're doing vanilla cashew unsweetened, okay? We're not adding in the sugars. And we're gonna do one cup of vanilla cashew. Yes, you could use an almond milk. I find the cashew milk is much creamier. It doesn't get all flecky the way almond milk does. So I prefer that, and here we go. One cup to one cup, that's your liquid. And let's talk about our pumpkin. No, I'm not using some weird spice packet. <laughs> that would not be a homemade recipe, now would it? Instead, I mean, I already opened it. I'm using pumpkin puree. This one is a Walmart brand, I think 88 cents for a can. So I'm gonna save you a ton of money instead of a $5 latte at Starbucks. Um, and it's loaded with fiber, very low carb, and a bunch of vitamin A, some vitamin C, and iron. So we're gonna pump up the nutritional value of our coffee drink. Instead of reaching for a spice packet, we're putting in the real deal. Now you could get a baking pumpkin, cut it in half, bake it. If you plan on doing pumpkin stuff, and you only, you know, you're gonna go through that process, that's fine. I do recommend you then putting your portion in through a little quick blender because I want it super thin. I know I've done homemade pumpkin for pumpkin pies and whatnot, and sometimes it can get a little chunkier or stringier. So these are these in a can are very pureed. Um, I have seen organic pumpkin out there today or yesterday when I went and got ingredients. I didn't see any at Walmart. That happened to be where I was. 
so I didn't see any. I'm going with a quarter cup, quarter cup of pumpkin puree. I'm gonna squeeze that all in there. And even while I'm talking now, I'm gonna kick the heat to a, a medium high. It's not like super boiling high. It's not quite medium, so I'll go medium high, okay? Uh, get that heat off. We're gonna add, a, even though we used vanilla cashew milk, we're gonna add a touch of vanilla. And when I say a touch, it's just a touch. It's a quarter teaspoon. I love the Trader Joe's Pure Bourbon Vanilla Extract. Make sure you're using pure extract, guys. I know there's a thing called imitation vanilla that's out there, but that's just fake chemical stuff. Don't do it. I know it saves you a buck, but it also won't save you your health. There we go. One quarter teaspoon. It's just going to help boost the flavor of that latte a bit instead of just counting on the cashew milk doing all the work and a half teaspoon here's where the magic comes in to really make a taste like pumpkin spice you need the spice <laughs> this is from trader joe's i know you can grab pumpkin spice blends anywhere just make sure you're reading the label i love a trader joe's it is cinnamon ginger lemon peel nutmeg cloves and cardamom there's nothing that says modified food starch or uh, oats or anything crazy because in blends you can get the craziest things. So do read your label. This is a half teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice. Now guys, I don't recommend you doing a rounded teaspoon. So take your time. Make sure it's only a half a teaspoon. We're not going to round it up today. And to sweeten it. Here's also where you can get a little more creative or do it according to your diet. If you are a sugar person and sugar is fine with you, you'll go for sugar. Um, today, I think it also brings in the fall flavors to use maple syrup. Now, pure, again, this is a Walmart. I went to Walmart to grab all these things today. Um, great value brand. It's pure, pure maple syrup. I don't know if you know better, but if you're buying anything like an Aunt Jemima or any of these other syrups that aren't syrups, <laughs> I remember shopping with a girlfriend once. I've never grocery shopped with her and she grabbed the Aunt Jemima kind of thing. And I was like, what? You give your kids that? And she's like, what are you talking about? It's syrup. And I was like, no, it's not syrup. Like read the ingredients. There's not even syrup in there. There's nothing from a tree or maple at all. And she looked and like the first ingredients, like, I don't know, corn syrup, <laughs> you know, and then sugar and all these things. So she's like, what? put it away and she grabbed herself maple syrup. The only ingredient on there should be maple syrup. Okay, cool. I chose this today because of that flavor forward reminds me more of like a fall pumpkin -y pumpkin spice. You could use coconut palm sugar if you don't want a glycemic spike. If you are completely zero carbing right now or really watching your carb, you might use monk fruit or swerve, which is erythritol. Um, but I don't love those flavors of those alternative things. I do enjoy coconut palm sugar, but like I said, I nutritionally lined them up and for the amount we're using, it's a matter of like one gram different of the sugar count when using maple syrup versus coconut palm. But if you don't want glycemic spike and you're really focused on keeping your blood sugar stable, you're going to choose coconut palm sugar. Okay. I'm doing, um, some maple syrup today and I'm going with two tablespoons. Okay, we got that. One, two. Perfect. So just like any form of drink, you will do what suits you. If you, when you drink your coffee, are all about like a a lighter coffee. You're going to maybe add in some heavy cream, but do know it will take off the nutritional value a little. It will be adding in some fats. I recommend you doing an organic heavy cream uh, to lighten the coffee. Um, if you prefer a sweeter coffee, again, you would add maybe an extra teaspoon or two or even another tablespoon of the sweetener. Um, I'm using a whisk here. So you know, because that pumpkin puree, it feels thick at first. It's going to thin out as I'm, as I'm stirring. And I want you to make sure it does not boil, okay? We're not going to let this boil. I'm going to put my finger in. Whoop. 
it's already almost hot enough to, to, to serve. And that is because the coffee I just put in that French press was already pretty hot. If you have yesterday's coffee or the coffee has sat a while, it will not be um, as hot or go as quickly. You might be here on the stove for like five minutes, which is still probably a whole lot less time than if you had to go to Starbucks Park your car, go in, place your order, tell them your name, it's gonna come out wrong. You ever notice Starbucks cannot figure out your name? And then you have to wait for it in line. So I'm saving you time, saving you money, and I'm gonna tell you the nutritional differences right here of these two. Now me personally, I, I recommend you using a Sumatra um, I'm going to go ahead and pour this into a nice cup, but um, I'm going to I'm going to take a little. I may have uh, made that a little strong on the uh, coffee side today. It was beautiful blend yesterday, but today I may have left that thing sitting there way too long. So let's pour it into a cup. I'm going to show you. You could opt for a. Fill your cup. You could opt for putting on whipped cream. I hope it's homemade. Um, but I actually opt for topping it with cinnamon. This is going to add an extra special sweet factor. Just a little dash will do. Um, it'll add an extra sweet factor. This, again, makes two cups. I'm only pouring one because the rest will go in the fridge for a delicious iced coffee tomorrow. And you're going to go ahead and Mm, give it a whirl. Super sweet. Yes, that cinnamon does give it a nice sweet nose when you're drinking. Mm, as I said, if you want it a thinner or a lighter color, you might add some heavy cream. Um, you could choose espresso roast coffee if you find a good one. I choose organic Sumatra. Sumatra has a lower acidity profile, so it is very... Um, it, it's better for you because a high acidity in your body can cause some havoc, including like disease, right? I just want to give you the differences. And I didn't just go to Starbucks site and pick, you know, the extra large venti and with whipped cream. I actually was like, what if I was not doing milk and I chose the milk alternative? They had on their little website almond milk as an option. And I did tall because this isn't a huge cup of coffee. So I, I'm nutritionally giving you the differences of the KJ pumpkin spice latte and a tall pumpkin spice latte at Starbucks made with almond milk, no whipped cream. Because I didn't give you whipped cream here. So I'm just going to give you some side-by-side -side comparisons. Mine is 78 calories. Theirs is 180. So I already did less than half of the caloric load. Uh, fat, I have one gram fat. I'm not a huge person who has to look at fats because if I were to add some heavy cream in here, it would add a little more fat, but theirs is 4.5 grams of fat. Mine's only one, so I did about a quarter of what they have. Carbohydrates, mine is 16 carbs, 16 grams of carbs. Theirs is 31. So let's cut that in half, guys. Woohoo! One gram of fiber to one gram of fiber. We're eye and eye on that one. And then sugars, I exactly cut in half. Theirs is 28 grams of sugar minus 14 grams of sugar. Now that was using maple syrup. If you really wanted to cut out all sugar, again, you'd be using monk fruit or something. So even if you're not a coffee drinker, grab your really strong chai. I'll show you what. I was brewing this chai today so I could try it out both ways for you. I have a couple chais and a couple coffees. I've been practicing all evening and this morning to find the perfect recipe. Um, and we kicked Starbucks butt. Pretty much everything cut in half. So you can save your money, save your time, add in extra nutrients, and save your wallet, save your waistline. All right, I hope this served you today. I appreciate you for tuning in. I ask that you share the love. Share this to your wall. I'm sure there's someone out there that loves their pumpkin spice latte all season long. And for that reason, not only are they wasting a lot of money, they're really not doing well for their waistline. Guys, let's not wait for New Year's to, to get in our best body. Let's start now. Daily, 
daily choices, everything you put in your mouth and in your body can be one step closer to your goal or one step further. And if you love specialty coffee drinks, I hope this will help you so you can be making motion closer to your goals. All right, share this. Thank you, thank you. I will have a live comment, a live link in the comment fields. If you want this recipe to your inbox, as well as every week's KJ Kitchen recipe, you will sign up on that link. And lots of love. Have a wonderful Wellness Wednesday, and I'll see you next week here in KJ's Kitchen.